Happy New Year! It has been like three months since I have done a video, but y'all, after these past two pregnancies, I deal with a little bit of postpartum overwhelm. And so I just had to take a break and focus on the things that are most important in my life. And I'm glad because I feel refreshed. Praise the Lord. Um, and so I'm back at it and uh, I'm excited to be hanging with y'all each week. Okay, so what I have here are some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And what I'm gonna do is just simply season them with salt, pepper, and a little bit of an all-purpose seasoning. And then I'll uh, finish it off with some avocado oil. And we'll do both sides so it's well seasoned. Massage that in. I baked that chicken for about an hour at 375 and I just covered it with aluminum foil so that it would develop some juices and not get dried out. So my nine-year-old Sophie asked if she could help me with the video and I let her. I let her take the camera and film this whole process of me cutting up this cauliflower. I kept laughing when I was editing the video because I was like, man, this cauliflower is like the star of the show. I have so many clips <laughs> of me cutting up this cauliflower, but she did such a good job. and. I wanted to use the footage that she got so she was really proud uh, and happy when she saw all of these really cool shots that she got and so I'm just dicing up the cauliflower rinsing it up okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roast these cauliflower now um, and I'm going to pop that into the oven with the chicken so that they can be cooking at the same time. And I'm just going to season it really simply with salt, pepper, the same seasonings that I use for the chicken. I like to use parchment paper whenever I am roasting vegetables in the oven just because it makes cleanup so much easier. Um, and so here just seasoned up the cauliflower, um, drizzled some avocado oil on it and put them in the oven with the chicken and it stayed in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. Out comes the famous cauliflower <laughs> followed by the chicken. Now the chicken was moist and did not get dried out because it was covered with that aluminum foil. So what I'm doing with the scale is measuring out each piece of chicken to five ounces. Um, this is actually not for me. I meal prepped for one of my friends. She's on um, a diet, you know, we're all trying to get back to a healthy weight. And for her system that she's doing, she can eat four to six um, ounces of protein per meal. So um, that's what I was doing. I was measuring out five ounces of chicken for each dish. So this is the next day and I had just gotten home from the grocery store 
and thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner prepared early today. So I thought I would go ahead and season up the chicken, get it in the oven and start baking before even putting the groceries away. That way two things are happening at once. And so I just seasoned up this chicken with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and poultry seasoning. I really like the combination of those seasonings together um, on chicken when I bake it in the oven because it just is so warm and such a cozy, delicious <laughs> flavor. And so again with the aluminum foil, <laughs> I just don't want my chicken to dry out, that's all. <laughs> uh, and so now I am putting the groceries away and getting my kitchen kind of put back together. Speaking of kitchen, if you have watched any of my other videos, then you may notice that the kitchen looks a bit different. And that is because, I have said this before, but I think that Hector was nesting right along with me before Timothy, our new baby, uh, was born. <laughs> and so we um, painted the cabinets and switched out the counters. Uh, and a friend of ours um, did the subway tile um, for the backsplash. And so we, we love it. We are enjoying it and um, think it's really beautiful. And so here is some sourdough that is bulk fermenting. We just love sourdough bread. Oh, there's nothing like freshly baked sourdough bread <laughs> that comes straight out of the oven. And this is a new jar that I got. I had been storing my sugar in a clear jar and so I got two extra and I've been storing my all-purpose flour and my oatmeal in a jar since we have so much oatmeal. <laughs> this is some ham that I had and it totaled about three pounds and so I divided it into three equal parts and put it in the freezer and I've just been taking it out a pound at a time. So I bought a new sweet treat that I wanted to try. Uh, it's this Key brand chocolate. I got the chocolate chips yesterday. They are very expensive. They will not be going in chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> um, but like as a little snack here and there, um, they're really, really good. So I thought I would try the actual chocolate bars. It comes in this little sleeve. Just take this out. All right, so this one is the cashew butter. This is how it comes filled with the cashew butter. Mmm. Mm, very good. Wow. That is really delicious. I feel like that was a nice little treat. I don't need to eat the whole bar. So yeah, it's a little, it's going to be more than a Snickers bar. Um, but you're not gonna need to eat the whole thing. I am gonna try this other one though. This one's a hazelnut butter and it's filled the same way. Mmm, wow. That has a very rich flavor. And if you just feel like, <laughs> you know, you're trying to eat more healthy and you just, like me, have a sweet tooth, I enjoy a sweet snack. But if you feel like you have just that like sweet tooth and you want to satisfy the sweet tooth, one little block of this stuff should do the trick. It's really, really good. Highly recommend. Mmm. That was really good. <laughs> and so what I do is I just keep mine in the refrigerator after I open it and I just feel like that keeps the chocolate fresh longer. So with the chicken in the oven, I am taking out some salt, pepper, garlic powder, poultry seasoning, and some bay leaves. And got some good old staples, <laughs> some onions, carrots, and celery, 
and that's always a really good base for any super stew. To me, the chunkier, the better. As I'm chopping up these vegetables, I'm just throwing those in the pot. I had some butter in there and just sauteing them up and I'm going to cook them down until they get nice and soft. Seasoning every layer of a soup or stew or chili or any kind of big pot of vegetables and meat um, is really important. That way you get a really good depth of flavor. So you wanna season as you go. Removing this chicken from the oven and then I take it out of the baking dish so that I can use this very valuable juice that it makes and I use that for my soup. And so this just goes to show you that messes happen in the kitchen. And, and that's all right. I thought I was saving some time by pouring both of these boxes of orzo in at the same time, but I don't know, I won't do that again. <laughs> it's okay. We cleaned it up. We got it, we got it cleaned up and cleared out. <laughs> It might have smelled a little smoky. Some of that orzo got on the on the burner, but it's okay. A splash of heavy cream at the end makes this a very creamy, delicious chicken orzo soup. I am about to make my favorite cookie in the entire world, the chocolate chip cookie. But this one's with a twist because I have two secret ingredients, but I guess they're not a secret now because I'm gonna share them with you. Uh, but there are two new ingredients that um, I add and it's just a small amount and it makes such a big difference. Uh, and I'll share that with you in a little bit. But I'm putting all of um, each of the ingredients in their own separate container. And I normally don't do this whenever I, you know, make cookies. But I think just for the sake of the video, so that you can see um, all of the ingredients that are going into the cookie dough, I just um, did this for you guys. I use two different types of flour. Um, one's an all-purpose flour and the other is freshly milled flour. Um, I just take my wheat berries, run them through the grain mill and you get fresh, fresh flour. Um, and so I like to do that because um, it's just it's healthier and it's more it has more fiber um, and so Whenever I can mix the flowers, I, I do that. You obviously do not have to have a mixer to make cookies, but it is much easier on the arm if you have one. So that's what we're doing today. Here are my two secret ingredients. I used a tablespoon of cocoa powder and I just put that through a sifter uh, because you know the cocoa powder it can um, like ball up. Uh, so I uh, did that in about a half of a tablespoon of coffee and it just adds this beautiful depth of flavor, this 
this light chocolatey uh, flavor. And I actually got that idea from my daughter, Bella. She loves to bake and she made a delicious chocolate cake and she used, she put coffee in it. And so um, that is where I got that idea from. And uh, I'm probably going to, from now on, uh, use these two ingredients for our chocolate chips because it adds a nice little twist and we all really enjoy it. We are a family of seven and so, you know, our seventh little family member does not eat cookies yet, but he will. I know, I'm sure of it. Uh, I got this large cookie sheet to make Christmas cookies with my daughters for a Christmas party that our ladies Bible study group was having. And we fit probably 20 cookies on that cookie sheet at a time. And so today I used an ice cream scoop for the chocolate chip cookies. And so I wanna say that's probably maybe two or three tablespoons. Um, maybe three or four tablespoons of cookie dough. Um, it's a good bit. And they're, they're large cookies. You'll see in a minute when I take out, take them out from the oven. But I will probably, I mean, unless I'm just making cookies for a couple of us, I'll probably never use a regular nine by 13 baking dish again. You can just bake up all the cookies at once. Um, and I don't have to do them in smaller batches or make small cookies, um, you know, when I'm making them for all of us. So the remaining cookie dough did not go to waste. Of course not. <laughs> we, I just scooped up what was left and put it in this glass dish and put it in the refrigerator and made it, I think it was the next night. Now I'm shaping up my sourdough, getting it ready to go in the oven. Now my delicious cookies are coming out. They are the perfect combination of soft and chewy on the inside and crispy on the outside. Thank you so much for stopping by and until next time, take care.